Greetings, this is Jeff Johnson, creator of Weathermaker. I've added clouds to the sky sphere. Right now the default has been changed from the textured sky sphere to the procedural sky sphere. And this is because it's much easier to add clouds into your game. So you don't need to have an artist paint your sky sphere textures anymore if you don't want to do that and you want to get a sky up and running really fast you can just pick one of these built-in cloud options. There's light, medium, and heavy, along with the storm clouds. Uh, the storm clouds are what was built in previously, the nice dark looking clouds, with the added bonus in this release that it dims the sun so that your game gets a little bit darker when a storm comes in. So these are still the clouds you'll want to use when you have a storm in your game, when you want to have rain and lightning and so forth. But if you just want to have regular clouds overhead that aren't this ominous, you can pick one of these other options. So here it's going to fade out the storm clouds and bring in some very light, wispy clouds. You can make these a little bit heavier by going to medium. And finally you can do heavy clouds, which are still going to be white, but are going to cover most of the sky. Over here on the Weathermaker Prefab, there's the Sky Sphere section. This has a new set of properties for clouds. Now, just to let you know, the clouds only work in play mode, so be sure to be in play mode. Okay, the clouds are based off of a noise texture. Uh, right now in the textures folder, Other, I have three noise textures. I'm using the second noise texture, but you can swap that out to see what kinds of clouds you can make with various noise textures. These have a lot of properties, so I'm going to run through these really fast. First of all is the noise scale. This controls how spread out the clouds are. You'll notice as you go in it gets kind of ridiculous and the noise tiles more and more. So you'll probably want to leave that at a pretty low value so that your clouds spread out and the noise doesn't look so obvious. You can increase or decrease the amount of noise that is generated from the noise texture. Usually one is a pretty good value. You can also control how the noise uh, distorts the clouds or makes them look like they have varying heights. So if you increase that you'll see that the clouds kind of change a little bit. And as you increase the noise height you'll see that the clouds look very wobbly and kind of distorted. There you go, that's a pretty good view. So as I'm changing this height, it kind of spreads the clouds out and gives them more of a 3D feel. Uh, you'll want to probably leave those close to the default values, but feel free to play with them if you want to produce some different kinds of cloud effects. Alright, moving on to velocity. Pretty straightforward. This is X and Z. Even though it says Y, it's really Z, so you can have your clouds move in different directions. I think that, yep. So you can get basically any kind of movement that you want from the clouds. Okay, so let's move on. Cloud color, pretty self explanatory. Uh, you can tint the cloud color, is basically what that's doing. Cloud height is. How high in the cloud? How high in the sky are the clouds? So if you do one, then they're right on top of you, or you can do a really high value, and then they're really, really far away. Uh, 500 is a pretty good value, so I suggest probably you want to just stick with that. Cloud cover controls how many clouds there are. Now, when you're picking these light, medium, and heavy clouds, all it's doing is animating the cloud cover, so you can see that it just simply changes this which also controls the amount of clouds in the sky. Cloud sharpness is another advanced parameter. You probably leave it as, as is but as you change this it controls how uh, visible the clouds are so you can fade out all of the clouds or you can make them completely opaque. Again I've played around with that 0 0.015 is a pretty good value so I would suggest leaving that. Cloud wispiness is an interesting one. You can see that as these clouds are moving, it looks like there's kind of multiple layers and there's kind of some wispiness going on. It's moving a little bit fast, so let's slow it down a little bit. We'll go ahead and start increasing the wispiness. Uh, it's really more noticeable on the medium cloud, so let's fade that out. 
there we go. So now these are pretty wispy, broken up clouds, and as you reduce that, they go to more uh, put together clouds. So feel free to play with that. The cloud wispiness uh, has a way to change over time. So this is basically a change. You can see they're really wavy looking now and very changing. And as you lower that, they don't change as much. They still change a little bit. So whatever effect you're going for, feel free to tweak this parameter. Finally, we have cloud thickness. Generally, you'll want to set this to zero, but you could, in the heavy clouds, turn the cloud thickness up a little bit to reduce the sun, which will also make the clouds less visible. So you may not want to do that. And uh, generally, that's probably going to stay at zero, but you can r increase that if you want to reduce the amount of sunlight that's visible. And that pretty much covers all of the cloud parameters. I really think this is going to be a super fast and easy way to bring clouds into your game. Uh, before I go, I'll just show you a sunset here. You can see that the clouds where the sun is behind them are much brighter. So I'm going to drop the sun down. It's like it's coming down over here. So nice looking sunset here. Uh, uses the sky spheres vertex colors to color the clouds so you can see as it goes down the clouds get that nice orange red hue so pretty cool to see a sunset with these clouds uh, there's another thing you're probably screaming at right now and that's the horizon you can see that that is a little bit above ground and that's due to the cloud height and some ray casting because it ray casts where the camera is up into the sky. If you need to get rid of that horizon because you have a flat game like an ocean, uh, go up to the sky sphere parameters and see this Y offset multiplier. This will let you drop the horizon up or down. So drag that until your horizon disappears to where you want and then you don't have that problem. You can even go a little bit lower if you don't like the tiling and there you can see the horizon looks pretty nice. Uh, if your game hides the horizon with a, with other uh, hills and mountains then you can leave the Y offset multiplier at zero. Thank you for watching this tutorial about SkySphere Clouds. Uh, please send me any questions to support at digitalruby.com. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.